Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to our online families. You guys are doing well. You get to see us face in the spirit. We welcome you today. And um, thank you, Mommy, for the prayer for today. So straight on, we'll just go into today's topic. Lesson three, if you have your outline, lesson three. And it says, a call to be blessed. A call to bless the Lord. A call to bless the Lord. Let's share what the prayers real quick. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your message once again. Thank you because you are kind. Thank you because you are always good. Thank you for knowing the end from the beginning. Thank you because you love us so much. And we appreciate that a lot. Though we take it a lot for granted and we are sorry. But we say thank you for everything that you do. Even as we go into today's um, Sunday school, we ask that you speak to each and every one of us. Let us learn of you, O oh God, once again. Let us know the truth to God, and we might be set free. Glorify Jesus in our lives, and we ask that your Holy Spirit will have his way in our midst this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. A call to bless the Lord. A call to bless the Lord. And uh, our text will be going from the book of Psalms, chapter 103, Psalms 103, 1 to 22. Psalms 103, 1 to 22. You have what? 102. 1 to 5. Oh, 1 to 5. Okay, I mean, sure. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquity and healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destructions, who crimeth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord has executed righteousness and judgment for them, for, for all that are oppressed. Verse 7, he made known his ways unto Moses, his heart unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Verse 9, he will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is I above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that feared him. Verse 12. For as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transactions from us. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. 16. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness upon children's children. Verses 18. To such as kept his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruled over all. Verses 20, which is the last verse. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that exalt his strength, that excel his strength, that do his commandments, hearken unto the voice of his word. May the Lord bless his reading. Amen. Thank you so much, ma. 
All right, that was Psalm 103, 1 to 20. Okay. And um, the memory verse we have here says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed, redeemed from, from the, the hand of the enemy. enemy. All right, can we just recite that together? Psalm 107, ago. verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Amen. A call to bless the Lord. All right. A call to bless the Lord. A calling on us to bless the name of the Lord. And the lesson introduction says, God made man in his own image. The Bible says that this generation, the Bible says that this creation by God was for his pleasure. The divine decision established an external link between man and God before sin broke the link. Now there's Revelation 4 verse 11, there's a popular song there, Thou art worthy to receive glory, honor, and power for thou hast created all, all things, things and for thy pleasure, pleasure they are and, and were created. created. Created for his pleasure. If you want to put in another, you know, another English, delight, meaning he delights in us. Okay, if, if we turn our Bible real quick to the book of Psalms chapter 18 verses 19. If you're there, you can just read Psalms 18, verse 19. It says something about pleasure. Anyone that can read Psalms 18, verse 19. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Thank you, ma. He delights in us. That is God. He delights, so we were created because he delights, he wants to fellowship. He loves us a lot. So what are we trying to say? Like the sermon, the topic says, a call to bless the Lord. And from our text, we read that, um, oh my soul, come bless the Lord. Every part of me. Every part of me, come and bless the Lord. Everything that you have, let it bless the Lord. Going further, it says, However, the redeemed of the Lord owe it as a duty to bless the Lord, especially for his unique act of mercy, because we are saved by grace and not by works. Required of the redeemed, required of the living. So one question we're going to be asking ourselves today is, I mean, why do the redeemed have to praise the Lord? Why should we praise the Lord? Why should we praise the Lord? A call to redeem, the living are included, are included and praised. Well, they, they are the same, just different titles in the, in the outlines, but it's the same content. All right. Okay. So, um, it's just a typographical error, I mean. But I thank you for the notice, Ma. Um, so, call to the redeemed. The living are included. Praise comes with power. That's the outline that we have today, okay? And we'll go with that. Lord leading us. So, as we were trying to say, who are the call? Who should bless the Lord? Who are the people that can bless the Lord? Thank you so much, Ron. 
the, the living are the people that mm. can bless the Lord. As long as you have life, you Amen. bless the Lord. Then those who are redeemed by Jesus Christ, or those who, as, um, those who are redeemed and those who, are, those who have given their life to Christ. Awesome. Thank you so much. Those who are the living, those who have given their lives to Christ, those, are, those can give thanks to God. Those can bless God. Thank you, Ma. Daddy. The Bible says, let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath, breath praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. There's even a song to that. Thank you so much. Uh, any other person who can bless the Lord? All right. So... The living can bless the Lord. Everything that has breath can bless the Lord. Oh, Daddy said the trees can bless the Lord. How about that? Awesome. Also, so here's a question. If, the, if it's just the living that can bless the Lord, what about the mountains? Everything. What about the chairs that you sit on? Can they bless God? Beautiful. All right. Uh, a car like Tesla cannot bless God. Beautiful. Now let's open our Bible real quick to the chapter that mommy read, 107, 102, actually, 103, rather, yeah. Um, actually, the last verse. It wasn't 20, actually, 22. Right, if we look, verse 21 says, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts. Ye ministers of his that do his pleasure, bless the Lord all his works. In all places of dominion, bless the Lord. When we, when we go to places like, you know, you, 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 know, you, you go to sinners, good sinners, like, you know, you travel, like sometimes we went to Vegas, Colorado, you know, we went to, we saw the Grand Canyon, right? When you see nature, when you see what God has done, all right, there's somewhere in the book of Psalm chapter 29. If you read the entire chapter, it talks about unheard voices. Let's look at it together. Psalm chapter 29. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness the voice of the lord is upon the waters the god of glory thunder it the, right. the lord is upon many waters amen amen that's one way also thank you ma and if we look at psalm chapter 19 again psalm chapter 19 verses 1 to 3 psalm chapter 19 verses 1 to 3 Are the heavens the declare the glory of god and the firmament showeth his hand, handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor, nor, nor language where their voice is not heard. Thank you very much. So every single second, they are worshipping God. They are referencing him. When the trees move like this, it's a sign. It's also a show that God is good. Now, what are we trying to say? God indeed says the living, like that is said, the living are included. So all these things are worshiping God in their own way. They are blessing God because of what he has done. So, you know, not in conclusion per se. A sinner cannot worship God. A sinner cannot bless God. But his works can bless God. Now, if you heard about, you know, the seven wonders of the world, the eight wonders of the world, if like, you know, what we talked about, like, big buildings, like, back in Nigeria, right, there used to be GT Bank. You can't find a two GT Bank that look alike. They all have beautiful shapes. You know, you begin to think about all this architectural design. Now, whoever gave this wisdom has to be very, very powerful has to be very up there. So, by all these things that we see, 
is a way of also glorifying God. It's a way of also glorifying God. So what are we saying? Because of time, the living, yes, blesses the Lord, but the sinner cannot actually worship God, but his works can worship God. But we we'll just go right ahead into today's sermon, I mean, today's um, lesson outlines. The call to the redeemed. And um, I'm trying to compare both of them. So believers must praise the Lord for the following reason. For forgiveness of sin. For assurance of salvation. For regeneration. Unto a new life. For redeeming us from the cause of the law. For making us his children. These are things that we should daily give thanks to God for. These are reasons why we should daily bless God for. But there's a reason why a lot of people, you know, a lot of us, we don't, you know, do it as we ought to. All right, if we turn our Bible to the book of Luke chapter 7, you know, we won't read everything. Luke chapter 7 verses, uh, let's just open to Luke chapter 37. I'll paraphrase the story because of time. Yeah, stand by, man. All right, Luke chapter 7, right? I'm just out because of time, right? It was about the story of a woman that washed Jesus' feet with her tears. Now, from verse 41, it says, There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 50 pence and the other 80. And Jesus asked Peter and said, Simon, who do you think, you know I mean, of these two, who will forgive more? I mean, tell me, which of them will love me more? Then Simon answered and said, I suppose he that forgave the most, because the, de the creditor forgave the two debtors. Then he turned concerning that woman that was washing Jesus' feet. And it said something in verse 47. He said, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. What are we trying to say in essence? That when you experience that mercy of God, that, you know, you see that glorious thing that God has done for you, you are not supposed to even be triggered to worship God, to bless God. It shouldn't be called upon and say, oh, come and do it. it doesn't have, they don't have to tell you about it. Because you, you have it in you already. Because you have it in you already. So what are we trying to say in essence? It's required of the redeemed to bless the name of the Lord. It's required of the redeemed to bless the name of the Lord. Second outline says, required of the living, all living souls should praise the Lord. Like we sang earlier, God had constantly spared us from the attack of the enemies. God wrought miracles for believers in the Bible, so enabled them to praise him. Example was Anna. Another example was Mary. Another example is Paul. Now, one case of Mary is um, Mary Magdalene, actually. If you read that same Luke chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, someone can help us, please. Luke chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Thank you, man. Out of, of whom? Thank you so much. Out of whom the uh, 
Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirit and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Mm. Can I continue? Now that's fine, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. So the reason we're trying to um, establish this is Mary Magdalene, of whom was healed seven, I mean, seven devils. That's a lot. And we read the story of the woman that Jesus said, if you are forgiven a lot, you know, you would bless a lot. You would love a lot. So in the case of Mary Magdalene, it's, so, it's, it's, shown, it's known that she is the first person, right? The first person that actually went to the tomb after Jesus rose. The very first person. That was her blessing the Lord. That's her showing so much love for God, for Jesus. Amen? So continuing, it's required of the living to bless the Lord because God loves us, spared us from the attack of the enemies. Jehoshaphat also praised God and won the battles of Moabites. Paul and Silas praised God and prison doors were unlocked and the jailer was saved. Here's a, a quick question. I mean, can anyone share, give us an example of how you blessed God and something extraordinary happened just because you blessed him? Can someone share? How you, you were trusting God for something and you blessed him and you experienced the mighty miracle. Thank you so much, ma. Uh, the time I was asking God for a particular thing and uh, it wasn't forthcoming. And, uh, and I went to Shiloh, Oyedepo's uh, program. And then I said that uh, everybody should give three days praise and worship. You sing or you play Christian music and dance for three days. And that three days, from morning to night, morning to night, I was just praising God, singing. If I cannot sing, I put CD, I dance, 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 dance. You can't believe it. The second day of the praise, God did a miracle that I never expected. When you praise God with all your heart, when you praise him like you have never done before, heaven will open. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. So we're also trying to establish that apart from our works, I mean, apart from, you know, Christians, unbelievers also bless and um, bless God through their works. Like I tried to explain earlier, that when they begin to, when you see a lot of creativity go on, right? A lot of like structures, architectural buildings, you know, like you see a lot of things come from wisdom, come from creation, creativity. What they, are, what they are trying to do without them even knowing sometimes is they are blessing God. They are, they are referencing God. And um, they are referencing God. And because of that, it's also very good that we not entirely give up on them and trust God that he can heal them. So what are we saying here? The topic for today, for those of us that just arrived, is a call to bless the Lord. And we started off from our, chapter, our text, Psalms 103, 1 to 5. We talked about how everything in you should bless the Lord. Your body, your soul, if you're not exercising, you're not blessing God because that body will wear out. So it's good to bless God. You have a question? Please, go ahead. No, um, I have a contribution. Um, I was just thinking of what you were saying about unbelievers blessing God and not even knowing it. And um, I just remembered 
before I became a Christian, um, one year we were doing a Thanksgiving um, service where you give out free tur um, turkeys and, you know, and I was singing. I wasn't really believe. I wasn't, I don't think I believed God at the time, but I was just singing along and everything. And the, um, the songs were really blessing me and I didn't know it. So even after everyone had left at the end of the night, I just sat there and I was just crying. And on my way home, I used to be an ex-smoker, so on my way home, I threw everything out, and I, and that was it, and I just, I stopped, you know, just from the one night of um, being in praises and, and worshiping God, and I just, I'm connecting it to what you're saying about unbelievers um, blessing God and not even knowing it, and even it bringing deliverance and, you know, breakthroughs. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. So, like she said... Of a truth, only the, I mean, like I said in the beginning, a sinner cannot worship God, but his works can bless God. That's what we're trying to emphasize. A sinner cannot worship God because Jesus said himself that those that are in spirit and in, and in truth are those that can worship God, all right? That time will come. You don't have to worship in the mountain, but in the spirit and in truth. So if you read the case of the story of the lady that we read from, I mean, the woman that we read from in Luke chapter 7. She brought her wig. She brought her, you know, makeup. She brought a lot of things. And um, she used that, what she had, to, you know, clean the, the feet of Jesus, to wash his feet. And Jesus appreciated that. Another example of someone that used what they had is Rahab. We know Rahab, that she was a harlot. She was a harlot. And what the Bible records is that Rahab offered what she had, her works. In this case, her works can be equivalent to her house. So she hid the children of God. And guess what? Her name is in the Bible to date. So little works like that can actually draw people and by his message. Which is why, you know, I said in the beginning, we shouldn't entirely just cast out those that are not unbelievers yet. You know, I mean, take for instance, someone like um, Jeff Bezos, you know, Amazon. They have like 1.2, you know, million employees right now. So let's say there's just one Christian there. I mean, there are a lot of Christians. But one Christian is just praying, God, Father, let your glory fill Amazon. Let your glory fill my office. You know, that's a prayer. God in his infinite mercy, I don't know if Bezo is born again or not, but God in his infinite mercy, because Bezo is the one through his works, through the wisdom God has given him, all right, through creativity, he has established work for people, all right, and people are happy, okay? So now because of that, right, they, they are being blessed. That family is feeding their, you know, children and all. So God, because of just that family, can in turn have mercy, on Bezo. For instance, he's not a born again. I don't know him. And that's how he can be saved. That's why when Paul, I think Peter was asked and said, if you say it's going to be hard for a rich man to enter heaven, Jesus now told him. Because Paul said, I think Peter said, um, Jesus said, it's easier for a camel to go into the eyes of a needle and for a rich man to enter into heaven. Then the apostle said, are you serious? So what about us? Then Jesus said something to him. He said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. So when we begin to say, oh, rich is going to be hard for them to enter. No, it's, it's conclusion. We are, we are kind of like judging them, so to say. All right, because God can have mercy on every one of them. So what are we trying to say in conclusion? I mean, I know time is fast spent already. It's just to encourage us that apart from Apart from, you know, coming to church and other things, we can also bless God through what we have, all right? You've got a car, you've got a job in your office, whatever it is you are, you don't have to be in church physically. Because Jesus had told that woman, remember, they were always going to Jerusalem to worship. Jesus said, that time is coming when you don't have to do this anymore. All you have to do 
let's take a look at it before we, as we round up. John chapter 6, verse 24. Or John chapter 4, verse 24. Let's look at it real quick. I hope I'm right about that verse. 24. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciple. Okay, not that much, sorry. I think it's um, 624. What is that? That's the verse that we read. Let's, let's, let's look at it together. John chapter 4, verses 24. Sorry, yeah. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Brethren, as we round up, when they say in spirit and in truth, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to, or I have to be, you know, like, being a certain attitude, or I have to be, like, jumping all around, or be, oh, put my face in some kind of funny way to make you believe I'm in the spirit. No. That's not true. Because the Bible says, as long as you confess the Lord and Savior as your, the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Right? You have become a born again and you are alive to God. So because of that, your, your spirit man is in tune with God. So you can just be going anywhere and you're worshipping God in the spirit. Now, the truth part of it is that you understand the word that Jesus has saved you from your sin. He has forgiven you. So when you begin to go in that light, that is just, I mean, it's the truth. Like now, I think it's um, Luke chapter 10. 10 verses 19 that said, nothing shall by any means hurt you, right? That's the promise. That's the truth. And when you go by such a scripture, right, and you are coming from that angle and you're worshiping God, you're not really jumping, you're not doing gymnastics, you're just walking in that light. He said it to you. When you do such a thing, you're worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And apart from that, you're also doing it through your walk. So what are we trying to encourage us at this time? The topic today is a call to bless the Lord. A call to bless the Lord. We're trying to encourage ourselves to bless God. We don't have to call you. You don't have to, you know, you, you are off God already. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 6 says something about we are accepted in the beloved. He has already accepted us. You know, that's another truth again. Because when we begin to say, oh, Lord God, please accept me, accept me. No. He has already accepted us. So when you begin to walk from that light, okay, and begin to bless God, you are doing what is right. Brethren, let's just bow our hearts to God and thank him for his kindness. Thank him for the grace and privilege to be called a child of God. Let's bless him. Bless him all the time. Thank him and ask him to give us the grace to bless us through what we have. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you open my eyes, open our eyes, oh Lord God, to be able to bless you with all we have through our body through our jobs, through our homes, through our vehicles, through what we have, through the money we have. Lord God, our Father, that your name might be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray.